Today we're uh, standing in Western Sydney priority lands. These are lands which the government say that they will protect. A group of us concerned about protecting these lands have come together to have a look and, at the vegetation and to map some of the endangered species which pretty much litter the entire land I'm standing on. As an artist I, of uh, botanical plants, I find this area of the Castle Ray woodlands very important to Western Sydney and to think that they could clear it for development is just unbelievable. It seems an absolute disgrace that uh, development will take place on these wonderful woodlands that you can see behind me. The bushland we're standing in is endangered vegetation. Uh, there's a couple of endangered equal communities which integrate into one another. You've got Castlereagh ironbark forest, you've got some Castlereagh woodland. Now this particular ecological community hosts a family of plants and, and within it are some of the very core endangered species of, uh, of the Cumberland Plain, such as Acacia bionoena, Alacasurina glericola, uh, Pisunia newtons, Dewinia tenuifolia, Micromyrtus minutiflora, and these are all found on this land that I'm standing on right now, and this land must be protected. Well, we're here today to do what the state government is not prepared to do, and that is get out and map, identify where the threatened species are, do an on-ground survey of threatened plants that are under uh, threat of destruction in, in lands that are under threat of zoning for development. There's two things under threat here today. Our natural heritage in Western Sydney is under threat, and the other thing under threat is good government in New South Wales. The credibility of the New South Wales government, the developers have an open door to the government and it is uh, development that is driving New South Wales government policy and the heritage of New South Wales, in this case the natural heritage, is going to be destroyed just for the sake of dollars. Well, to my mind and the minds of my friends here today is that uh, there's a lot more to life than just money and we need to conserve the bushland, our natural heritage, a habitat for our fauna, whether it be uh, macro fauna, right down to the smallest uh, size of fauna, they need to be conserved here, in, in, particularly here in Western Sydney. And that's what we're out here fighting for. We have a heritage, we have an attachment to the land, and it is our bushland, our flora and fauna, and we want to conserve it, not just for ourselves, but for future generations uh, of Australians so they can appreciate uh, what we have appreciated and what our forebears have appreciated and that's what we're out here to conserve. We will fight the New South Wales government all the way on this. There has to be honesty in government. We're looking at particularly threatened species that are found right through this area in, in vast numbers. Uh, at, in this part of northwest Sydney, there are, there are threatened plant species that occur nowhere else. And they're incredibly common out here. That's the, the bitter irony of it. They're, they're all up the road here. There's about half a dozen species that are, some of them endangered by a government that has an obligation, has in fact made promises to, as they should, obviously protect these threatened species. You don't, you don't just go down a, a one-way, dead-end road of destruction that... Um, that is literally criminal. It is the obligation of government to protect threatened species, to protect bushland, to protect the future. We've been compromising our natural heritage in Sydney, especially the western suburbs, for many, many years as development has kept encroaching on areas of beautiful bushland. And I think it's really important that we keep our natural heritage. We've had to compromise with massive amounts of destruction done by developers and what little is left of our Cumberland Plain woodland is now under threat by having to be compromised again. There's so little of it left that I don't think we've room to compromise. We really need to save and expand what little we have left. Uh, as a proud Australian, I feel very, very embarrassed by the fact that Australia has got one of the worst native animal extinction rates in the world. And it's all mainly due to habitat destruction. And uh, wiping out bushland such as we see over here is not going to help that fact one iota. It is critical that we try to reduce our impact on the environment rather than increase our impact. Now this land has been claimed from the Crown by the Darubin Aboriginal Land Council. The Darubin have a plan to 
sell this land off for development. Now they've managed to get a zoning out of Penrith Council which allows this and the plan, the zoning plan is going up to the planning minister Tony Kelly for approval so he must stop that. Tony Kelly, the planning minister for New South Wales, must reject and amend Penrith Council's flawed local environmental plan because it allows this bushland, this rare vegetation, these last remnants of bushland on the Cumberland Plain to be cut up and subdivided for two hectare rural subdivision housing. What we're going to get if that happens is an, an obliteration of the endangered species, the endangered flora and fauna that this, this land provides habitat for. This would be an appalling outcome for Western Sydney and it would be a, a betrayal of the people of Western Sydney. The government has stated in policy documents such as the recovery plan for Cumberland Plain vegetation and also the uh, biodiversity certification of the Sydney Growth Centres that it will protect these lands. These lands are the offset lands that the government has said will be protected to allow development to proceed in the massive Sydney growth centres. 20,000 hectares of land is going to be opened up for housing. Within that area there's endangered vegetation which is going to be obliterated and the government has said well we're going to allow that to happen but we're going to do so and still have a green outcome by protecting these lands. Now at the very first test of the government's rhetoric we find that the planning minister is on the verge of approving a plan, a zoning plan, Penrith Council's local environmental plan, which proposes to carve this area up for two hectare subdivision. Now that's appalling. Now this, the government, if it wants to save face and win the next election, it's going to have to win seats like this in, in the marginal seat here of Londonderry. Tony Kelly, on behalf of his government, has to act. He has to reject Penrith Council's crazy, flawed LEP and protect these priority sites.